Good morning. Welcome everybody this morning. Anybody here for the first time this morning? So everybody's been here before, and that's good. Well, y'all make each other welcome. Uh, a few announcements on our prayer list this morning. Angel lost her footer, whatever that means. But the stuff that's on the bottom <laughs> is not there. So if you've got a prayer request, the bottom still does tear off. It's perforated. So anything you need to church know, prayer request, or if you want to volunteer to work with the Bible school or whatever you want to do, put it on there, and we'll have your name. Put your information on that, and we'll uh, put your prayer request on there, and we'll, we'll get that hopefully straightened out by next week. Sometimes things don't go the way we want them to every day. Uh, I've got a card here. It says, a blessing is just what you need right when you need it. It says, thank you so very, thank you so very much for, the, for your prayers and the beautiful flowers. Robin Yeager. Uh, Waver, why don't you come up and come up and do your I had uh, made this statement last week that I was going to try to sort of kind of give you a report about how the church is reaching out into the community and beyond the community, not only to church members, but to people just in the community that's not church members. I'm waiting on a couple more reports to get that finalized, so maybe by next week, okay? I'm not trying to put you off. Just wanted you to know that that's the reason I'm not giving it today. Thank you. There is uh, lots going on within our church with our Wednesday evening program with the youth, and uh, we've got Bible school coming up the week after school's out. There's plenty of avenues for everybody in this building to help uh, help spread God's word to our youth, and and and, through, and and we're also going to redo the kitchen at the fellowship hall. All that's kind of in process, and. Uh, we're excited about that to where we can better serve the people of the church. Uh, birthdays. Any birthdays this past week? Jake Watts. Chad Dixon. Clarence. There's lots. There's some people don't want to. There's one back there. There's, there's, there's several birthdays within the, within the fellowship. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. Anniversaries. Dennis and Jeannie. Tammy and Scott. That's all I see. Happy anniversary to you, happy anniversary to you, happy anniversary, God bless you, happy anniversary to you. At this time, we'll uh, receive the morning offering. I'll ask the guys to come forward. We'll turn to hymn number 172 in the Songs of Faith. Dylan, I'll ask you to bless the offering, please. Yeah. 
We are going to have choir practice today at 5. Uh, everybody that would join us in the choir will sing out of the songs of faith.
Laura asked me to sing this, so this is for you, Miss Laura. I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before, no said goodbyes will there be spoken, for time While they're getting ready, this song has been on my heart all week. Um, it just feels like the world is so burdened right now and so just overshadowed. And, and you know, I, I'm proud to know that I serve a risen Savior. And he took my place, he took your place this morning. And whatever struggle you may be in right now, however hard life may be, just know that sometimes those struggles and those trials are what are used to get us back closer to him pray for me as I sing this song this morning
I faced a mountain that I never faced before. That's why I'm calling on you, Lord. I know it's been a while, but Lord, please hear my prayer. I need you like I never have before. Sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes a troubled sea. Sometimes it takes a desert to get a hold of me. Your love is so much stronger than whatever troubles me. Sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you and believe. Forgive me, Jesus, I thought I could control whatever life would throw my way. But this I will admit has brought me to my knees. I need you, Lord, and I'm not ashamed to say. Sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes a troubled sea. Sometimes it takes a desert to get a hold of me. Your love is so much stronger than whatever troubles me. Sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you and believe. Sometimes it takes a mountain, sometimes a troubled sea. Sometimes it takes a desert to get a hold of me. Your love is so much stronger than whatever troubles me. Sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you and believe. Your love is so much stronger than whatever troubles me. Sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you and believe. Amen. It's good to be in God's house this morning. It's good to feel His presence. Uh, it's good to see each one of you here today and hope and pray if you haven't been blessed already that you will be. Uh, we do thank God for you being here. Uh, I was thinking about 
the message this morning, and it's very basic, a very basic message this morning, but you know God's plan of salvation and His love for us, that's pretty basic. It's not, not hard to understand. I just thank God for His love and mercy, forgiveness and saving grace. Thank Him for His plan of salvation. Thank Him for making a way uh, for us when we couldn't make a way on our own. I just thank Him and praise Him for that. But I want to turn over, if you will, now, like I say, very basic message, but it's what God put on my heart, chapter 3 in the Gospel of John. Gospel of John, chapter 3. Very, very popular verse, I guess. We see it on the boards nailed on to the side of trees. We see it on... I see it on sometimes if I'm watching a football game. This sign will be held up in the end zone uh, when they're kicking a field goal or an extra point. It says John 3.16. Very, very basic. We see that all over the place. Um, but I want to talk about John 3.16 this morning. I want to expand on that just a little bit. Um, what, what brought Jesus to say those words? And I want to give an example over in the Old Testament uh, book of Numbers, chapter 21, and that, uh, an example that Jesus gave us to go along with this John 3.16. I would, I would say here this morning, if there's anybody, I know it's been mentioned in prior already, but if there's anybody here and you've not ever been saved, you don't know, seems like we sung several songs this morning about heaven, you don't know for sure you're on the way to heaven, you can today. You can know that today for sure, not because of something I say, but because of what God's Word says and what Jesus said, what Jesus told us here, how we can know for sure we're going to go to heaven. Jesus, the one that died for us, suffered and died on that cross, He tells us, He tells a man here, He said, you're, you're trying and you're going about a lot of ways to try to get to heaven, but there's only one way. And here this morning you can... You can hear that today, and if you don't know you're on your way to heaven, you can. If you need to be saved, you can be today by God's grace, and it's available to all. Chapter 3, uh, uh, Gospel of John. I'm going to read a few verses here at the beginning and then jump down into the middle of the chapter, and then, like I say, a spot over in Numbers chapter 21. Here in chapter 3 of the Gospel of John, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Now, if you've uh, been maybe listening to some of our messages here lately, it seemed like we talked a lot about the Pharisees. They were a very religious group. A lot of them were better than you type fellas. A lot of them was. And, and uh, Nicodemus was one of the Pharisees. But I believe that Nicodemus, and he was raised up there, I believe, uh, serving and uh, trying to serve God and serve in the church and and, and But he knew that there was something about Jesus that was different than what he had, okay? He was one of the Pharisees. He wasn't one of the ones out trying to find fault with Jesus and the ones that Jesus was preaching and teaching. He wasn't one of them. He was, he was, he was a Pharisee, and he was a ruler of the Jews, but he knew there was something special about Jesus. And it says this same Nicodemus, the same came to Jesus by night. wonder why he come by night. I always think probably he didn't want maybe some of his Pharisee friends seeing him come and getting in contact with Jesus, but he knew there was something missing in his life. And you know, um, uh, we can be like Nicodemus. We can go to church. We can maybe even be a member of the church. We can have a position. We can do a lot of good things. And you say, but preacher, there's still something missing in my life. It's because we don't get things right with God by the stuff we do. Okay, we get things right with God by what he did for us. And then Jesus is going to explain that to Nicodemus, giving him an example right here. But this same came to Jesus by night, and he said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher. Come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. He said, you know, we, I know there's something special about you, Jesus. He said, I know there's something different about you because these things you're doing, God has to be with you. He didn't realize it, but he was talking to the Son of God 
uh, right there he was. Yeah, they was something special about Jesus. He said, I can tell they something different. You know, we know because of the miracles you do, God's with you. Jesus said, he just cut to the chase right here. Jesus said, answered and said, and I'm talking about talking to a very religious man, a man that probably didn't miss no church services, a man that was always giving and doing and things of his own self. Jesus, let me tell you, answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He said, you've got to be saved. It don't matter, it don't matter if, you, if you, like I say, if you've been a member of the church, it don't matter if you're the preacher of the church, Sunday school teacher, deacon, uh, uh, whatever, you've got to be saved. You've got to be saved if you're aiming on trying to go to heaven. That's the only way is to be born again, to be saved. Well, Nicodemus heard this, and he said, I, I don't understand. Basically, he said, I don't understand. How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time and do his mother's womb and be born? Again, right there, he was thinking of the physical. Uh, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Uh, you've got to, you know, we've got to be physically born. We've got to become a person. But then we've got to be born of God's Spirit. God speaks to our heart and shows us that we've sinned and done wrong and shows us that God loves us and shows us that God made a way that we could be saved. That's what he's talking about being spiritually born. He explained that down there through him, to him. And, and again in verse, I'm going to jump a little bit now. Verse 9, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be again? He, I don't understand, Jesus. How can it be? Jesus answered and said to him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and we testify that, testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. He said, there's not nobody going to go to heaven on their own doings. He said, uh, the, Jesus has come down, the Son of Man. He's come down from heaven. And listen, folks, this is the key to it right here. Jesus said, oh, there's a story. Over in the Old Testament, no doubt Nicodemus was well studied in the Old Testament. He said, surely you'll relate to this. And this is the way it is. Folks, if you ask me how does a person get saved, I believe that John chapter 3 Verse 14 explains it to the best any possible way. John chapter 3, verse 14, Jesus said, Here's the way it is. He said, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. If you don't know that story this morning, you say, What in the world are you talking about, preacher? What is Jesus talking about? Let me tell you, Nicodemus, I'm sure, knew this story that Jesus was talking about. Jesus said it's just like when Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness. He said that even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Just like Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness, and I'm going to explain that just in a minute. He said Jesus, me, me the Son of Man, he's going to have to be lifted up, and everyone that looks to him can be saved. We'll continue reading there just in a minute. Turn with me over to Numbers chapter 21 and the story of the serpent of the serpent lifted up that Jesus was talking about. Jesus used this illustration. It's something that happened back in the days of, of Moses over here. The children of Israel, if we look back over into context where they were at, the children of Israel were making their way from Egypt to the promised land, and it was a long journey, mainly because of their disobedience. It wasn't that long physically, but because of their disobedience and distrust, in God and, and their ways. They, they made a lot of rounds for 40 years in the, in the wilderness. Nevertheless, this was one of their bad spots right here. The children of Israel, they sinned against God, and, and God brought a judgment upon them. And I'm going to read about that judgment. And this so clearly illustrates what Jesus was saying there in John chapter 3 and verse 14. It says in Numbers chapter 21, if I jump back to verse 4, it said, And they journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Eden, and the souls of the people was much discouraged because of the way. In other words, the children of Israel, they were on their way to the promised land, and it was, it was, a, it was a rough travel along through there in them days. I guess the, 
the terrain was rough, whatever, may have been hot and dry, I'm not sure, but the word says that they were discouraged because of the way, and when they became discouraged because of the way, the people spake against God. God's people spake against God and against Moses. Listen to what they said. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. What kind of light bread was he talking about, preacher? God had given them manna. He would rain down manna for them to eat every day. And, and so they'd have, you know, because out there in the desert, in the wilderness, there ain't nothing much grows, and they were without. But God would even feed them every day. The manna would rain down. And they said, here you have brought us. We was, and you know, they might as well said, we was good slaves down yonder. It sure was good being in bondage. We didn't do what we were supposed to. We got beat to death, and we sure enjoyed it. You should have left us down there. They might as well have said that. They was murmuring against God. God was bringing them from a place of being a slave uh, and, and no life at all to bring them to the promised land, and all they could do was complain. They said, and this old light bread, we loathe it. And that means intense dislike. We're about tired of this old light bread you're giving us every morning. Uh, you know, you should have left us down there, and, and boy, that I believe, you ever heard the old saying, that flew all over me? When somebody says that, I believe that flew all over God. He said, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much of the people of Israel died. All right, you going to complain? He sent fiery serpents. Anybody like snakes? I don't like them, especially if they was fiery. I don't like none of them. But they was snakes everywhere uh, running around about them folks, and they was dying. Why? It was because of God's judgment that he brought on them for the way they was complaining and murmuring against God. All God was doing was trying to take them to a better place, give them a better life. They grumble, complain, said, here's you some snakes. There come the fiery snakes. They went to biting them. They went to eating them. Didn't take them long to turn around. Didn't take them long to turn around. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. That's about it, ain't it? That's all we can do a lot of times. We can say that we've sinned. That's just the bottom line. We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee, praying to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. I thought about that, and I wrote it in my margin a long time ago. You got the sin of the people, then you got God's judgment comes, then you got their confession. They knew they'd done wrong. They confessed it to Moses. Said, yeah, Moses, pray to God. They take these fiery serpents. They're going to kill us all. They're going to kill us all, these snakes. We pray that he take them away. And, and, and the Lord, here in verse 8, made a way. Ain't that what God does? Make a way for us. Verse 8, And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man when he beheld the serpent of brass, that he lived. So God told him, he said, you make a brass serpent, put that serpent on a pole and hold it up, and to live, they simply had to look to that serpent. They had to have faith and believe what Moses told them and that God would deliver them, and they would look to that. I often thought it don't say, what about the stubborn ones that said, well, I ain't looked at that old serpent. I ain't going to do what old Moses said. They died, okay? That's just the way it was. And you know, when we overlook God's way, that's the way it's going to be with us. We're just going to die. That's just going to be it. But he held it. They'd say, boy, that, that seems so silly. That seems so. Well, they'd die if they thought it was silly. If they wanted to live, they'd bit by those serpents. They had to look. They said, even as, and this is what Jesus said, Nicodemus, you'll understand this. Nicodemus, you ain't understand nothing I've said so far, but you'll understand this, Nicodemus. And as Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness, what happened? The people had been bitten by the fiery serpent because of their sin. They were dying, okay? They were going to die. And he said, you look to this serpent and you'll live. Jesus said, even as Moses lift up the serpent and they could look to it and they could live, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Folks, it's that simple. It's just like 
when the children of Israel were cursed because of their sin and they were bitten by the snakes, they could look to the serpent and live. Folks, I'll tell you what, we've ever one been bitten by sin. We've all been bitten by sin, every one of us. And when we've sinned and we realize that, uh, we can look to Jesus. He was held up on that cross, uh, hanged on that cross, suffered and died for me and you. We can look to him. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life for God. This is that verse 316, that one we see posted all over the place. We maybe overlook it, folks, but there's so much in this verse. For God, and I'll tell you what, this is something I can't wrap my imagination or mind around. The word so, S-O. Listen right here. For God so loved. God so loved the world. Folks, that's you, and that's me, and that's whosoever will call on the name of the Lord. God so loved us so much. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Let me ask you one question. Who would you give your son for? Who? Nobody. Ain't no parent here would give your son for nobody. But God so loved us, folks. He so loved us that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, not perish, but have everlasting life. I love this next verse. You say, you love them all. I love a lot of them right along in here, sure enough. Verse 17, listen right here. A lot of folks think God is out to get them. God's just waiting on them. We to mess up so he can strike me down. There ain't nothing farther from the truth, okay? If he wanted to strike us down, we'd have done been struck, okay? All right? For God sent his son, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, God's not out to condemn nobody, but that the world through him might be saved. I can't tell you nothing no better today, folks. He sent Jesus not to condemn us, but so we could be saved. God so loved you today. If you've not ever accepted uh, this plan of salvation, this man of salvation, Jesus, if you've not ever accepted that, folks, God so loved you, uh, you're, you're, you're missing out. Let me tell you, you're missing out. You need to be saved. You need to be born into God's family. As I thought about uh, Jesus' illustration there, I thought, you know, those, those people there over in Moses' day, they were dying. They were bitten by that snake, but they could look and live. God's Word tells us that we're not dying. It says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, we're already dead. Okay? You ever think about that? We're already dead in our trespasses and sins. And the Bible says, and all have sinned and come short of God's glory over there in Romans 3.23. And it says the wages of sin is death. Okay, not just physical death, but eternal death apart from God. That's what the wages of sin is. We're all in the same boat, if you will, here this morning. We've all sinned and done wrong. Uh, and, and until, and this is just the way it is, so I didn't come to hear that. I just got to tell you the truth here this morning. Until we're saved, until we're born again, we're all lost in sin and headed to hell. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, and it's reached the age of accountability. What does that mean? You know right from wrong. You know what I'm talking about here this morning. If you've reached the age of accountability and you know what I'm talking about here this morning, you need to be saved if you had not already been. That's just everybody. And God so loves us. God wants to save us. As I said there a while ago, we've all been bitten by sin. Every one of us has sinned and done wrong, and we know it. But we can look to Jesus and live. He said it. I didn't say that. Not something I had to it. Jesus said, just like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, and they could live, uh, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. I thought the perfect, sinless, Son of God, Jesus, never did not one thing wrong. The perfect, sinless Son of God, He suffered there on that cross, suffered pain, shame, agony, separation from the Father. The Bible tells us He was separated from the Father God because He had my sin and your sin. He suffered every bit of that. and He died there on that cross for my sins and for your sins. He paid the price. He suffered the hell that I deserved that you deserve. He did that for us. Folks suffered there on the cross, but he didn't stay dead. He rose again the third day, overcoming death, hell, and the grave. 
And as I was thinking, and this is just the way it is, when we put our faith, hope, and trust in Him, when we accept Him as our Savior, when we get born into the family of God, we put our faith, hope, and trust in Him, we may die one of these days, but we'll not stay dead. Okay? We'll arise with Him. That's just the way it is. I can't tell you no better news here today, folks, but I'm just going to tell you, if you've not ever been saved, if you've not ever been born into God's family, you need to be. You need to be. Folks here this morning, I want you to give it real serious consideration. Uh, we don't know. We're not promised tomorrow. I'm going to tell you here this morning, Jesus, if you've not ever been saved, He died for you. God so loved you. This morning, I'm going to ask Renata to come and get a verse of some song. I'm going to ask you to think about it here this morning. God so loved you that He made a way that you could be saved. He suffered and died for you so that you could be saved. Just like this religion, I believe, I believe that this Nicodemus man, I'm satisfied that he got saved. I did, it don't for sure tell us that, but it tells us he was over there when they helped him along when they buried Jesus. I'm satisfied that this man that was very religious, that never did miss a church service, did all these things, I believe he realized uh, that he had sinned and done wrong. He knew that. He realized there was something he didn't have. They was peace that he needed with God. I believe he realized that. And, and I believe that he's in heaven. I believe he is. I believe he accepts. Maybe today you realize there's something you need. You need peace with God today. Maybe you realize I'm the one that's sinned, done wrong. I need to be saved. I need to be born into God's family. You need to do that today, folks. We realize that. We realize our need. In our situation, we can come and call on Him. I'm going to ask you to stand here this morning. Maybe you've been here many, many times. Folks, if God speaks to our heart and shows us that we're lost, and His Word says we all are lost until we've been saved, we need to step out and come to God here today and accept that love that He has for us. Think about it here this morning. For God so loved. Maybe with every head bowed and every eye closed. Here this morning, I'm going to ask you just to think about it. For God so loved me. Put your name in that spot. For God so loved me. Have I ever accepted Him as my Lord and Savior? If you've not, folks, I'm going to ask you to step out. You say, there's a lot of folks here today. That don't matter a bit. We'd, they'd be rejoicing. They'd be rejoicing if somebody gets saved here this morning. I'm going to ask you to step out. If he spoke to your heart for any reason here this morning, maybe you have been saved. You're not where you need to be with God. Well, you know, we can come back to Him the same way we come to Him to start with. God loves us, folks. She sings plays a verse, whatever it is he's put on her heart. I'm going to ask you to do whatever it is he's laid on your heart. Step out here this morning. Folks, God loves you and wants to do you good here this morning. In letters of crimson God wrote his love on a hillside so long long ago For you and for me, Jesus died, the greatest love story was told. I love Singing. There's a verse over there. It says, "How shall we escape if 
we neglect so great a salvation. You know, we're not going to escape. If God spoke to your heart here this morning and you need to be saved, you ought to come to this altar, folks. Some of us would be glad to pray with you. He spoke to you for any reason. I'm going to ask you to step out. She sings another verse. Down through the ages, God wrote his love with the same hand that suffered and bled. The message so easily read. I love you. I love you. That's what Calvary said. I love. sing one more verse. I'm not trying to drag nothing out, but this just come to me and and it's just the way it is. Folks, if we say no to God, every time we say no to God, it gets a little bit easier. No, I'll wait till next week. No, I'll wait till some other time. Our heart gets a little harder every time. God spoke to your heart here this morning about being saved, about being born into God's family. Folks, it's a real simple plan. We look to Jesus. We don't just believe that He was a person, but we believe that He suffered and died in our place for our sin. When we realize that we've sinned and done wrong, and we realize what God's done for us, folks, that's when we need to come. That's when we need to come. I'll guarantee you there'll not ever be another easier time. There'll never be an easier time than today. She plays another verse. I'm not trying to drag things out. I just want to give you every chance, folks, because the next time won't be as easy. If he's speaking and knocking at your heart's door again, maybe with every head bowed and every eye closed, he loved you so much. In letters of crimson, God wrote his love on a hillside so long, long ago. For you and for me, Jesus died. The greatest love story was told. I love you. I love you. That's what Calvary to do that, show you something in God's Word, pray with you, whatever we might be able to do for you, we'd be glad to do that. Has anybody got something you want to thank God for or make mention of here this morning?
anybody else. We want to this morning recognize Caitlin Wilson. She was saved here a couple of weeks ago, and we want to present her with a Bible. So Brian's going to take her a Bible at this time, and we're proud and thankful for her and glad her and her family are back with us this morning. Anything else need to be said or made mention of? Anybody? If not, I would ask you to come back and be with us tonight. Uh, come back on Sunday nights, Wednesday nights. Awful good crowd uh, this morning, and I thank God for each one of you being here. Uh, come back and be with us at the night time, though. It'd be good to see you here, and I believe you'd be blessed for that. And I'm sure the guys would say, and tell them to come to Sunday school. Come to Sunday school also. You're missing out if you don't. Uh, come to Sunday school, so come and be a part of that. I believe these things is where we really uh, grow, and folks, there ain't nothing better than if we could grow closer to God. That'd be good for every one of us. So come back if you can and be with us at the night services and on Sunday school. Nothing else to be said. I'm going to ask Wavery if he'll dismiss us in prayer, and you'll be free to go.